legend is the greatest you ever made. Legend has a special place in my heart. I was a big Georgetown fan. I'm a part of this thing that's bigger than me and it's really important. When the dunk came on the scene, that was the ultimate team shoot. You can mock it up and color it any way you want. Give me all the dunks. When Nike introduced the 82 Georgetown squad to the Nike legend, it gave the team an identity and made other schools mad jealous. The envy only grew when Georgetown switched to Terminators, customizing the Hoyas blue and gray colors. It was more than just a fashion statement. It was a declaration of team over individuals, of everyone saying we got each other's back. Because in the game of college basketball, it takes five working as one to win the ultimate prize. Georgetown had their own little thing going on with Nike, but it started with the legend. Core, fantastic basketball shoes. The stitching system was, you know, put into place to stop the blowout. And Coach Thompson was coaching. I mean, Georgetown was a machine. You know, they were, they had a different attitude. They had a different, they're almost militant, you know, but disciplined. When John Thompson was there, that logo and stuff became so popular. And those colors, man, and just to see them run out, like one of the first teams that had it, the shoes, the color, the jersey. Coach Thompson kind of had an insistence that, look, we're going to represent ourselves as a team. His team, his boys love the shoes. His fellas love to play in the shoe. There was a presence about Georgetown that you just were dying to see what their footwear was going to be. The one of the shoes almost looked like a boxing shoe. It was so hot. And then the Terminator came on, and you had these gray and dark blue with the big you know, letters across the back. It was the ultimate in Nike intimidation. This was AKA Big Nike, because it said Nike real big in the back. So this was cool fashion-wise, because you just wanted everybody to know that you had Nikes on. So you kind of folded your pants one way. Doing different things that allowed Georgetown, I think, to separate itself as a different identity. And the Terminator did that from a footwear standpoint. That's when you start to get the Patrick Ewing era coming online. Hoyas had special Terminators made with Hoyas, you know, printed on the back. The original dunk advertisement, right, that says be true to your school and has all the colors of the dunk, it also has the Terminator. You know, it's down in, I think it's the lower right-hand corner. That's one of those cool kind of sneakerhead things because it was like it was the Georgetown shoe. Every fan was fiending for a team shoe. So in 1985, Nike introduced the dunk. Where it started to get exciting, uh, I think, was with the dunk. The dunk, however, it looked nice, though. Like, the way they had colored the, the upper with the orange, and then all of a sudden they were doing yellow, blue, and white midsole, gray and red. The dunk wasn't necessarily made for schools, but Nike was smart enough to attach colorways to specific schools. You know, schools in the Big Ten, schools in the Pac-10, schools in the Big East. Syracuse had their version of the dunk. Orange and white, like that Kentucky blue. It wasn't just a blue, it was Kentucky blue. St. John's had their own shoe. Iowa had their own shoe in the Big Ten. Michigan had their own shoe in the Big Ten. You go out in the Pac-10, Arizona had their own shoe. Anybody who played on a black, white, silver, red, or white colored uniform team said, wow, that goes with my uniform. That shoe sort of was like, wait a minute, what if we were to give that kind of energy to anybody who played on a team. The ad was, would be true to your school, and it showcased the dunk in its, all its team colors. The panels on the dunks lended itself for all colleges, and Nike was just specific on giving certain colleges certain shoes that worked. So that was a real, I think one of the first times Nike made a massive statement uh, through team basketball. At that time, you know, basketball shoes had sort of been evolutionary. You know, they, they had, there was definitely innovation. You also started to have players come into the league who challenged what the conventional uniform was. Hey, I want the shorts longer. You know, I'm gonna wear the different types of shoes. Put the smile on your face that you know you were part of the uh, style, changed some of the fashion sense of uh, college basketball. All five of us had on black socks or the long shorts. Today, the dunk is known as a real sort of uh, sneakerhead and shoe culture oriented type. Right? Everybody loves the dunk. The dunk disappeared. For a long time. Started us with a basketball shoe. And the reason it's carried on from there is because skateboarding back then, there were no skateboarding shoes, and or you couldn't afford what they had out. From sophisticated kids in the suburbs to older folks, young folks, hip hop kids, you know, the dunk has many different interpretations. On some fashion side, like, oh, okay, let's let's get they get a jazzy, let's get down with it. So it got it as proper as in the clubs like Latin Quarters, Union Square, all the clubs that were relevant for the mid-80s. They are classics, first of all. 
They're not adjusted in any way. They are the same shoe that came out 20, 25 years ago. They're simple. They're easy to manipulate and put graphics on, do colorways, do materials, whatever it is. And they're basic shoes that look good. This particular one is a Nike 6.0, Nike Dunk 6.0. It's not like the Nike SB for Nike skateboarding. You know, of course you have like, you know, the SB line, the skateboarding line, and a lot of kids you know, back in the day, skated dunks, and so they brought that back. This would be the Nike SB section from here to here. All dunks and SBs are in this section, and a lot of the guys that come into the store looking for dunks, when they walk in, they come straight to this section. They don't look around. They're like, yeah, boom, oh, I found the Huffs. What size do you have in this? It's been about five, six years that it's really been pretty strong. Uh, the Nike Dunk Highs, the skateboardings, they come out so many different styles. And the Dunk High, you know, it's a little different cut than the retro, a little bit higher, and again, they were made for like, you know, Iowa and Michigan and Syracuse and, you know, Kentucky, all those kinds of schools, and, you know, they made them different colors for the team, you know, and I think, I think Nike Skateboarding actually did a tribute to that when they brought that back in the, you know, in the suede models, and I think that was really cool. The torch is passed, new level. I think basketball has been responsible for creating a whole different genre in the game of shoes because I don't care what anybody says, dunks were not made for skateboarders, they were made for basketball players. Can you guys tell me what the hell you're doing here? Waiting for the Puff Quakes, Air Force One on dunks. How long have you been here? Coming up on 40 hours. Bad, I feel really bad that they have to wait. Kids are troopers, man. They really, they have, they have fun on the line though, and we hang out with them and talk to them. It's a little culture. I think they know how limited a shoe like this is, and um, they want to guarantee that they have that shoe. Some of it could be a status also, that they got it. They're Huffs, the San Francisco, coming here first. It's got a lot of hype, cool colorway. Everything's pretty cool, it's pretty cool. pretty cool. They said the revolution will not be televised. But nobody ever talks about the evolution. This is real rap, true pioneers. When I'm in the lane, everybody stay clear. I was brought up, taught to have no fear. Play every minute like the time is near. I'm a go-getter, spectator cheer.